Lesson 1.9 Graph of Inverse Functions So in this lesson, we shall go back to one-to-one -one function and how do we tell if functions are one-to-one? -one? And we are concerned with one-to-one -one functions because it is only one-to-one -one functions that are sure to have an inverse function. And then later, we shall show how to obtain the inverse function, and I will also show how the graph of a function and its uh, inverse appear on the same xy plane. How can we tell if a function is one to one? We do the horizontal line test. If any horizontal line meets the graph of a function at more than one point, then the function is not one to one. That is the same as saying that if any horizontal line meets the graph of a function in one point exactly or no point at all, then the function is one-to-one. -one. Again, why are we concerned about one-to-one -one function? We are concerned about them because only one-to-one -one functions are sure to have an inverse function. Which function is one-to-one? -one? using your horizontal line test. This function f of x, which is equal to the absolute value of x, is not one-to-one -one because it has two points of intersection. This function f of x is equal to x over x plus 1 is a one-to-one -one function, again because of your horizontal line test. This function f of x is equal to x minus 2 times square root of x is not a one-to-one -one function because this line, for example, intersects the graph at two points. How about this? f of x is equal to e to the x minus 2. This is a one-to-one -one function. How about this one? This one is a sketch of the graph of tangent of x. It has many vertical asymptotes because it is undefined when x is equal to pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, so on and so forth. So this one obviously is not a one-to-one -one function. It has no inverse function. This is the bigger picture of its graph. Now pay attention to this graph. This is a smaller section of the graph of your tangent function. In particular, this is the graph of the function tangent of x, where x is greater than negative pi over 2, but less than pi over 2. So this part of the graph with this restriction is a one-to-one -one function, in which case this function has an inverse function. We shall meet cases like this often when we speak about inverse functions of circular functions. Circular functions in general are not one-to-one -one functions, but when we do this, when we restrict the domain of your function, we can produce a one-to-one -one circular function. How about this? f of x is equal to ln of x. It is a one-to-one -one function. How to get the inverse function given a one-to-one -one function? For example, this is our function. f of x is equal to x over x plus 1. From the previous slide, we saw that this is one-to-one. -one. It has an inverse function. So exactly what is the inverse function? This is what we do. We write it as y is equal to x over x plus 1. We will replace this by y. Then we shall interchange the variables. We shall replace this with x and then we shall replace this with y. Next, we shall solve for y in terms of x. So from this equation, x is equal to y over y plus 1. How do we isolate y? We multiply both sides by y plus 1. Again, our concern here is to solve for y in terms of x. And you can do that if we can isolate y from this equation. Multiplying x to your 
to the terms inside your grouping symbol, this becomes x times y plus x is equal to y. xy minus y is equal to negative x. We factor out y and then we divide the equation by x minus 1. And this is what we got. y is equal to negative of x over x minus 1. And then we will use the notation for inverse function. Okay, we will replace y by f inverse of x. This is how you write the inverse function. So let us write a summary of the steps to get the inverse function. When we are given a one-to-one -one function, we replace f of x by y. We interchange the symbols. It becomes x is equal to y over y plus 1. And then, we solve for y in terms of x. And we do this by isolating y from this equation. And this is the result. y is equal to negative x all over x minus 1. And then, we will replace y by the notation for the inverse function. This is how you write the inverse function of f of x. The graph of a one-to-one -one function and its inverse appear nicely when you sketch their graphs on the same xy plane. There is a symmetry about them. For example, our function is f of x is equal to 4x plus 2. Its graph is this line. Okay. Now, the inverse function for f of x is this one f inverse of x is equal to 1 fourth times x minus 1 half. This is the graph of the inverse function. Now, let us show another function and its inverse function. f of x is equal to square root of x plus 1 is a 1 to 1 function. This is its graph. The inverse function for f is this one. It's equal to the square of x minus 1. And this is the graph of the inverse function. There is a symmetry about the function and its inverse function when you sketch the graphs on the same xy plane. Given the graph for your function, the graph of its inverse on the same xy plane is going to be this. It's going to be the reflection of the function across the line y is equal to x. When I was a student, when, when we were tasked to sketch the graph of the inverse function, what I would do is I will first draw the function on my xy plane, and then I will draw this line y is equal to x, and then I will fold the paper. I will fold the paper across that line, and then I will trace the reflection of this function across the line y is equal to x. And so this is going to be the graph of the inverse function.